Welcome back to AMBC. We're talking about cystic fibrosis, uh, and we will be talking about an event that's coming up, an incredible bike ride to raise money for CF. And joining us is Paul Underhill. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you, Jill. Good. We're glad to have you here. Now, I was just saying to Dr. Chilvers, the treatment you would have had as a child and the care is quite different than the way they're treating kids now, but obviously you survived it all. What do you attribute that to? Uh, a great deal of fortune. I've been, I've been blessed my whole life. It's a little bit of bit of luck and it's also uh, you know I had great parents that encouraged me to be active from an early age um, and I think that made a big difference as Dr. Mark would attest physical activity when young is one of the best things for people with CF. Mm -hmm. And do some people do the opposite because it's hard to breathe and hard to, to move around? So uh, Some people the, the teenage years can be challenging on the, uh, at times on because there's a lot of rebellion about doing the therapy because it does impact on your day you stand up from being different from your from your peers but we do uh, uh, encourage as much physical exercise as, as possible in addition to the physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Now you obviously did fairly well health-wise as a child. When did, did your lungs start to falter? Uh, I would say it was definitely my teen years. Um, as a young child I did antibiotics frequently <clears throat> but moving into my teen years the infections got harder to deal with and by the time I was in my 20s it was repeated hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. And when did you have a lung transplant? I got my lung transplant on Good Friday two years ago so that was a uh, a really good Friday indeed. I <laughs> bet. We've got some pictures. Now, you yeah. were in your 40s by then, late 30s? Yep, I was. I was put on the list when I was uh, 40. That picture was when I was uh, actually waiting for transplant, and, and that one, uh, just looking down, that's from the day of transplant. All those different wires and everything poking into you, and yeah. And that's the scar. Exactly. Yeah, that's the scar. That's a, about a week afterwards, and uh, it's actually pretty well healed by that point. So they literally cut Right under there, yep. lift you open, yep. pull they, out your old lungs. Precisely, they cut through the sternum, uh, they saw through it and put in a set of new lungs. So. Mm -hmm. That's Quite amazing. Impressive. It really is. Yeah. The interesting thing though about transplant, it isn't just uh, you get new organs and off you go, right? No, not quite. Um, it's it's obviously a bit of a process, and at first, uh, you're just your body's going to adapt to having those new lungs, and you wonder about what might be possible, but you don't know because every individual is different. So you start off with walking, and uh, here I just actually ran 10k uh, a couple of weeks ago. So almost anything's possible uh, with the right circumstances. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Gilbert, he's got to be the poster boy yep. for CF, really. Th that's, that's right on there. And I think the, the other thing with transplant is, well, obviously you're, you're treating the lungs, but the CF is still there. Exactly. They still have the digestive issues and the diabetic issues and potential liver issues and things yeah. like that. So tell us how you're functioning health-wise these days then. Yeah, health-wise, I mean, I would say I'm in the best shape of my life, but as as the doctor says, I've still got diabetes, um, so I've got to be careful with what I eat. Uh, I've still got to have digestive enzymes in my food because of the pancreatic issues. And of course, living with life post-transplant brings a whole new host of challenges in terms of avoiding infection and you know being hyper clean and careful to not be exposed to people that are obviously sick and so forth. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Speaking of health issues and mm. food, you've yeah. created a drink. Yeah. And you've called it. Rumble. Right, yeah. Well, I, I originally came up with this idea five years ago when I was in a state of need. I was looking for nutrient dense, but we've had a whole team behind us. Um, Dr. Kim McQueen, my friend James, and, and uh, my friend Steve. So the four of us have really gotten behind this and, yeah, tried to uh, answer that problem. It. You don't sure, have please to do. Please please do. Please do. <laughs> yeah. I have the Dutch cocoa flavor because I wanted it. Yeah. The options, ooh, smells good. Yeah, thanks, yeah. It's yummy. Yeah, and that was, that was the challenge. Thank you. That was the challenge. Anyone can make something healthy, but how do you make something super healthy that's also tasting good? So. And what, what does this do for you? What it does for you, um, well, for me, today, I was, I was actually a bit of a hurry on the way here, so I had it for breakfast. So people who like to miss breakfast but still want to make sure they're having adequate nutrition, um, it's basically on-the-go, convenient, healthy food. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to you? Is this something you would have before a race, or is this something that's good for your digestive system? Well, and the answer is both, Joe. It's, it's, it's something that I do before and after a long ride or a run, um, because it does have 20 grams of protein, making it ideal for recovery. But more importantly, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm having my adequate sort of protein and omega-3s and uh, for me I'm really all about trying to make sure I get all those things each day. It's got a bit of kale and spinach in there so 
I'm on the go. I thought I could taste kale. I'm busy. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm pretty busy person. So for me, it's 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 what I need now to help fuel my active life. It helped fuel my recovery. But prior to transplant, the same recipes um, really helped me stay alive to transplant because I didn't have any appetite. And uh, when you don't have much appetite, you don't have much motivation to eat. No, and you're not foods. getting the proteins you need, are you? No, you anything. So that was that was where it came yeah. from. Yeah. Let's look at some more pictures you sent us because sure. uh, you you mentioned you just ran. Well, you ran a 10k. Yeah. You've also um, had some other athletic endeavors. Yeah, that was from last year. We did the, uh, uh, a group of friends and I did the Tour de Victoria, and I've read a Hazard Tour de Victoria, and we chose the 140 distance. And to me, it was this celebration of life to have come from being on oxygen 24 7 with a walker through to being riding farther than I've been in my entire life. And that was my wife greeting me at the finish line. And Look I, at the relief on her face. I know, that's, that's it. It was profound. And that, that, I love that photo for that reason because it's sort of like the end of a two and a half year journey for us of declining health through to recovery. And it's encapsulated perfectly with that photo. All right. And you are preparing for, you may or may not do this, but yeah. you are preparing for. Yeah. The, the bike the, Yeah, the Rumble Gear Up for CF. And, and that's a special meaning to me on a number of reasons. It's raising awareness and funds for CF research. First and foremost, that's the, that's the biggest deal. Secondly, the fact that we are able, uh, as a company able to sponsor it is fantastic because I have that personal connection. But be able to ride it is the thing I'm probably most grateful for. That I'm going to, and I say, you know, trying to ride it. But yeah, it's 1,200 kilometers from Vancouver to Banff, and I really want to be able to, to do that together with my friends to, to, to show that if we can do this, you know, people can dig a little deeper and hopefully contribute to help cure CF. Wouldn't that be nice? That I was going to ask you about that when, when just you and I were speaking earlier. What about a cure? It's great that we've come up with all of these uh, ways of extending life and feeling better and things like that. But what about the cure? So the, the cure is, is, is like the holy grail really to, on there. But we're actually, there's a new medication which has just been um, approved by Health Canada, which we're actually using for some of our patients with uh, cystic fibrosis, which is as close to a cure as, as we've ever been. The downside, it only benefits 5% of uh, young people and adults with with um, cystic fibrosis. The main thing, there's still 95% uh, of people who are awaiting that cure. Mm -hmm. And work goes on, and certainly over the next uh, five to 10 years, I think we're, we're gonna see some major breakthroughs coming, coming down the line. Isn't that amazing? You know what, I think in the next, I'm gonna say 20 years, we're gonna see all sorts of things fall yeah. over. You know, other cancers, sure those so. kind of, it's gonna yeah. be amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you both for being here this morning. Thank you You're for the welcome. update yeah. on yeah. CF, you, and good luck with uh, the bike ride. And oh. A little bit of rumble. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> normally what my stomach's doing right about now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. What a pleasure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cheers.